What's up, YouTube? I have yet another brand new opening for you guys. It's never been played in chess before, and I've already named it the Zebra. Spelled Z-E-B-R-A-H, of course, like chess bra. Come on, I had to claim it or something. All right, let me show you exactly how to play it. It starts with E4. A very popular reply, the Sicilian. If you're looking for an opening against E4, E5, I have lots of newly invented openings that we've released on the channel, so check them out. But we're gonna stick with the Sicilian for now. After C5, play E5, and then immediately play C3. This is key. You have to pre-move C3. Now, E5 looks like the categoric worst move in the position, which is why it's never been played. But after the move e5, you can imagine that black will play knight c6. Of course, it's not forced. I'm not saying this is going to work every single time. You're not going to get it always. But most people are going to play knight c6. And remember, you have pre-moved c3. So this is already happening no matter what. Now they see this beautiful hanging pawn in the middle of the board. They're going to take it. b4. Takes, takes. If they don't take, we play the exact same way, but they'll almost always take. Now the knight's being attacked. These squares are actually covered by the pieces, so black only has two options. If the knight goes back here, we immediately kick it again with d5. Knight b8, we just go for simple development. Castle quickly, put pressure on the e-pawn to try to make it hard for him to castle. That's all you need to know. But most people will, you know, keep their, their knight still active in the middle of the board. Again, we just want to develop, and from here, we're looking at playing the move f4 to kick the knight back to g6. Your opponents are going to need to develop somehow, like this move, it's hard to develop that bishop. This move, it's hard to develop that bishop. So maybe b6, for example. Right, we're immediately going to get our knight out. And let's say a position like this, we can castle, play queen e2. This bishop has a hard time developing because you need d6 to get this one out. But then your knight's sitting on g6, so you can't ganketo. It's hard to play e6. We'll probably just take it and launch an attack down the e-file. So this is already a really nice position for white. Now, what else could happen? After our pawn reaches d4 in the center, they could play the very natural knight g6. Immediately h4. I'm threatening to win the knight. Just so you know, knight f6 loses the game. So a lot of people, when you play h4, will immediately play h5. This is a big mistake already. After bishop d3, you hit the knight. And first of all, f takes g6 is already a bit of a concession. Nobody's going to be happy to do that. But it's forced. There's no rook h6. So, I mean, almost everyone at this point is going to play maybe e6 or knight f6 or something. After e6, I would just go ahead and take right? You've got these double pawns, easy to play against. Queen d3, for example, your knight comes to f3. You've got the e5 and g5 squares, and this pawn is super difficult to defend. So we have really easy development, take it right away. However, if they don't play e6 and give their knight a retreating square, play knight f6, it's hilarious, but I've had this happen so many times in my games. You play queen c2, and <laughs> literally you're winning the g-pawn. The knight can't move anywhere, I mean, I'm threatening checkmate the two moves here. Plus, my pieces always develop to the exact same square. So it's super easy to play. You have great compensation. If you don't play, if your opponents rather don't play h5 and they just start with e6 to bring the knight back, that's fine too. Again, pieces go to the exact same squares. At this point, I would go for a position like this. h5, there's always this issue. So at this point, if they develop their pieces, we get a nice play with h5, maybe queen g4, knight out, bishop to f4, g5, and our opponent has a hard time castling. So we get a huge initiative, tons of traps that our opponent can fall into. I've mentioned a few of them in the video so far. And if you're wondering where the inspiration for this came from, I'll actually just flip the board and I'll show you real quick. There is a variation against the English, which goes c4, e5. Okay, obviously the pieces start developing. Knight f3, this is the two knights English. 
But now, black plays e4. Knight g5 and c6. This is an opening that Adiban, Grandmaster from India, has tried a few times successfully over the board. I think it's a really cool idea. The whole point is, well, hang on, does this look familiar? This is basically our exact opening, except the knights on g8 and g1 have been traded. So this is where the inspiration came from. I thought, okay, well, maybe we can make this happen just from white's perspective. And as a bonus, we don't even have to trade the knights. So something new to try against the Sicilian. It's called the zebra. e5, pre-move c3. Everyone plays knight c6. I've played a ton of games. Everybody plays it. And then c3, once they grab that pawn, everything starts after you play d4. You kick the knight around, you gain a lot of time, and a lot of people will trap their knight on g6. I've had tons of success with it in the pool, and I'm gonna show you a few of those games right now. So take a look, got some example games just to show you how the opening works against very strong players, 2,600 plus in the chess.com pool. So e6, knight c3. I don't think he'll play h5. d5 for sure. And then d5 just looks good. Okay, so didn't really uh, ever check knight takes h4, but maybe this will be... Uh, I should have checked it moment, but I just know it's not supposed to be gray. Maybe to do with just D5 stuff. Hmm. So Maybe there's something uh, significantly more direct, like bishop here, knight here or something. I don't know, but I'll just go here for now. But an open h file, like, can't be that bad, so. I'll just develop. Not like, too sure what I should be doing here, but yeah, maybe this was not so great. Kind of regretting it. But this is fine. That's exactly what I want to do. Hell yeah. This is perfect. I like everything's open. It's a dream. Should've probably taken that, what the hell? I didn't realize it was only king takes. Oof, hang on a sec. We're getting too uh, familiar with this position. Here, he can now take check and queen back to d7. Uh, but I mean, the game was over. What the fuck was bishop d7? I definitely didn't think that one through. Literally, it's lost on the spot. <laughs> That's frustrating. That's so annoying. shouldn't be allowed to play that. Uh, 
so st like I just can't believe he played this. I was gonna play this no matter what, but this move's so bad. What? Can't believe he did that. More annoying is if he gets away with it. Just be tilted. Oof. That would have been tilting to lose. It all went to perfection. Oh, hello, Mannered Monkey. MM, you're here at a great time, sir. Oh, once I got C4. Oh, fuck, I was peeking here. No, but Bishop D7 was god awful. I can't believe he played it. I thought he was going to move his king, dude. It's just such a bad match, losing immediately. Like, <laughs> he literally resigned. I can't believe he did it. And I just, like, autopiloted rookie one. Completely annoying. That's a fun one, though. Just passing the time. Strong players need to be taken to the shed in our new variation. Zebra. Mm. Interesting. I think we just ignore it. I see three next. Not sure what that move does. Mm, we're close to something here. Queen C2 already looks tremendous. Once again, this theme of the knight just being trapped <laughs> while just sitting there occurs. We have d5 here. We also have knight g5. So many good looking moves. Knight g5 looks crushing. But so does d5. Can't 
<laughs> it all looks good. It all looks good. King D8, it's not over. Not at all. Oh, wow. It's literally like, just, I'm spoiled for a move here. That's no good, so I guess we take. Only got one move, right? Uh, I guess you could go there. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Here we just go this way. I'm still not sure about this. But yeah, the idea is here, we don't care about this knight, it's more of a distraction. If he goes here, we just take and take and we're up a piece. So yeah, he has to play this. Has to be good though. 86. Queen h5. Queen h5, knight f7, but like. Bro can't move. This is covered. It's very stuck here. Has to be rook c8. Should have just taken a knight d8. I mean, we're still winning, but that would have been nice and simple. I actually thought he was going to take with the pawn, and he took here, and for some reason caught me off guard. I mean, he can't move a single piece, so I'm not that concerned, but... I mean... <laughs> that's, uh... That's a pretty good advertisement for the opening right there. Man, after h5, bishop d3, it's so annoying. Truly. Like, as soon as they play e6 or d6, oh, actually, no, not e6. e6 is different. But d6 or d5, it's queen c2. When they haven't moved their e pawn, this knight is trapped. It's such a weird feeling. But queen c2 is just so annoying. Knight a4 was a good move, and then I thought this was pretty nasty. My guy's completely trapped. And yeah, here queen takes f7 is super simple, although d5 might be the best move. Definitely ended the game faster. This is just like you're never going to lose it, so it makes sense to do. But actually, d5, I think, is better because he just can't. <laughs> can't do anything. He's literally stuck without a move.